teams from around the world, and that we had not gotten to do that since early October of 2019. And so uh, we were hungry for that, and it was great to, for our team to put their uniforms on and, and battle with a live opponent uh, uh, from a different country across the net. Absolutely. We're, we're ready to go. Okay, last question. For, for people at home who are going to be watching, what should they be looking for? Um, I think one of the things that volleyball players and certainly the players on our team enjoy a great deal about our game is that there's this rhythm to it and you play a play, and then there's a chance for a little physical contact, give five, look somebody in the eye, give a high five, and then we get on to the next play. But there's this chance to connect and reconnect uh, after each rally, and our players uh, crave that a lot. And it's our goal in Tokyo is to out-team the other teams to be a tighter, uh, better connected team with the most trust possible between all of its members. Because we don't have a single player who can just take over a match uh, and be tough to stop across the net. We, we rely on a much greater uh, a, a team concept. And we love playing that way. So, so for fans who don't know volleyball that well, they can, they can just watch our team and watch the eye contact and watch the physical contact between plays uh, because that's something we pride ourselves on. And if we start getting small and looking at the ground and hunching our shoulders, that's when we're not being who we want to be, which is we want to be tall and proud and strong and look at each other in the eye and, and ready to do battle. Great. Anything we didn't cover? I think we got it. Thank you. Thank no, it's okay. Okay. Yes, I am Haley Washington. That's H A L E I G H W A S H I N G T O N. Yep, Washington, and I'm a middle blocker. Okay, great. And you are about to go to your first Olympics. Yes. How, how is this um, very surreal. I keep saying it to myself out loud, like, oh, um, who went to the Olympics? And I don't believe it. Like, even just talking about it now, my legs get all tingly and my knees feel like jelly. And it's really exciting, though. I'm just super blessed to have the opportunity to compete at the highest level possible in my sport. That's, that's just mind-blowing. And I'm, I'm so grateful for the opportunity. So I'm stoked. <laughs> have been thinking about going to the Olympics? Um, since I was told I was going, I was, I know, I know. I just, I don't like to get my hopes up too high. I've always been kind of in this professionally, like in the sport professionally as a way to pursue mastery. And that's what my main focus has been on. It's like, I want to get as good as I can in this sport. And that's my main goal is pursuing my craft. Because very few people have the opportunity to do that. And so it's always been in the back of my mind, like, okay, we're getting closer. Okay, the roster's going to get announced. Okay. But I've never let myself get my hopes too high because I didn't honestly want to be disappointed. I know it's kind of a cowardly approach, but I respect that that's my narrative. And I just was more focused on learning and growing and mastering this craft. <laughs> I know, it's a little different. It's very different. I mean, it looks like you're having fun out there. Oh, yeah. I, I love this game. Today we did a drill. I don't know if you got any footage from today, but we did a drill that I cannot stand and it's just it's so hard to win and it's so frustrating and it makes me want to tear my hair out and punch things and scream but I walk off the court with a smile on my face because god I love it I love this game man oh it's so annoying you know you just love something so much it's like ah oh, that's what it is no words <laughs> I can describe, let me paint you a word picture. There's this moment where you're out on the court and you're in the middle of the play, the whistle's blown, the ball's been served, and you're just doing it. You're just playing volleyball. You're totally free, you're not thinking about anything, you're loose, and you're just in this like beautiful state of flowing. And like you're seeing things before they're even happening and you're reacting before your body even knows what it's doing, but you're not thinking, you're just flying. It's amazing. <laughs> 
Uh, that's that's what I love about volleyball. <laughs> uh, say again. Um, never at that level. I've never played another sport where I felt that much freedom, I guess, for lack of a better term. But I did play basketball, and I did do high jump in track. I was, uh, went to state for high jump, and I was not very good at it, but I liked it. I think it's important to try other sports, and yeah, basketball and track. Back to the minute that I went. Oh, I actually, yes. We were in our hotel in Rimini, and we were taken into a uh, coach's room, and we were told that it was going to be Karch and another assistant coach, one of our female assistant coaches. But I walked in, and all the coaches were there, and I'm like, oh my gosh, he's going to give us this news in front of everybody. And I was very nervous, but trying to keep just like a level head. And he sat me down. He was like, telling me a story about like my start here and how my very first year I was like I'm really not worried about making rosters I'm just here to play volleyball we're all good and then in 2019 I kind of asked him I was like so can I start thinking about making rosters is that okay and he's like yeah you could consider it and then how I made VNL and made it to World Cup and how we just progressively grown and then he was like and now congratulations you're going to the Olympics and I was like a deer in the headlights like, I, I don't think I cried. I don't think I react. I was just like, and I was speechless, which I'm a very chatty person. I don't know if you've noticed this yet. I'm a little bit chatty. And so for me to have nothing to say, like, I couldn't even, I think I managed to get a thank you out to my coaching staff because obviously without them, I wouldn't be where I am. So I got a thank you out and I told them I'm so grateful for the opportunity. And I didn't cry. I didn't, re I just, deer in the headlights, silenced. It was very embarrassing. Very embarrassing. I should have had a more emotional reaction, and I did not. <laughs> I'm sure, because well, I've heard. I talked to all my teammates, and they all were all telling me, like, yeah, I broke down and cried, or oh, I was crying and bawling my eyes out, and I was like, sick. Didn't do that. That was not me. <laughs> very embarrassing. Redo. <laughs> Gotta run it back. Tell me again. I got it. I'm ready this time. Okay, let me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so hot. No, I'm just kidding. That's ridiculous. <laughs> okay. So then did you call her and what did you do? I actually, I told my parents through a text message. I texted them because we were at this, the hotel that we were staying at didn't have the world's greatest Wi-Fi. And so I knew that we had a lot of girls that were feeling an array of emotions. There were high emotions. There were low emotions. And so the only place that had good Wi-Fi was our team room. And I didn't really want to step on anybody that wanted, was making a call in there. So I just texted a message and was like, hey, um... Just made the Olympic roster, FYI. And my sister actually read it and was the first one to react and be like, oh my gosh, that's so amazing. And so she took a video and went and filmed my parents and telling them that I made the Olympic roster. And my parents read the message and they, my mom claps. And then my dad starts crying and my mom starts crying and they're just so sweet. And it was a really nice message. And I didn't even cry at that. I don't, <laughs> I just was like, again, still shocked. Save that for the podium. Yeah, <laughs> we'll are see. You cry if you guys are on the podium? I, uh, I can't even think that far ahead. Like I just let's just get to Tokyo first, and then we'll work for it. And I'm, I would not be surprised at all if I cried when we got on that podium. Speaking of trying to get there, well, it's just been it's been the most unique path to an Olympics, I think ever, if I may be so bold. That's a really big statement, but I think with the pandemic, with everything closing down, with how crazy it was overseas for a lot of girls this past year, we haven't, when we competed at VNL, we hadn't competed together for over a year and a half. Like that's never been done before. And so it's been a crazy road. And I'm just really impressed, not just by our team, but I think all the teams that have like found ways to kind of push through that adversity and still play at a, such an elite high level. So it's been, it's been absolutely insane, but I'm really proud of the work that we put in and that we're putting in every day to be ready to get onto that podium. Do you feel ready? <laughs> absolutely not. There's always things I want to be better at. I'm just, that, no way, but I think that's good. I think you should always strive to be better than you were yesterday. We jokingly said that in the huddle today. We were like, well, we're going to be better tomorrow. And I was like, isn't that the point of every day? We're always trying to be better than the day before. My friends didn't think it was it, the joke. They didn't like that joke. But that's the point, you know? I don't think you're ever ready. I think you just bring out the best that you have and always try to be better the next day.
Wow, I'm like a Hallmark card. <laughs> Oh, I'm devastated. I have a younger brother and a younger sister, Caden and Leilani, who I absolutely adore. I love both of my parents so much. I'm playing at this level because of all the sacrifices they put in Sorry, when I was in high school and stuff. And so I try not to think about it. That, well, that one will actually make me cry. Thinking about that it's my first Olympics and that I, my family can't be there, that, that one hits a little bit close to home. That's a big disappointment because they've been at everything. They were at my first tournaments. They were at my college games. It's just been such a long road, and it's just a shame that they can't be there. But I, I get it, and that's what more can you do about it except cry and move on. <laughs> right. And there, are they going to be holding parties? And stuff for yes, actually, USA is uh, putting on this really cool watch party in Orlando. And so my parents are going to go to this watch party in Orlando, and they're going to get to meet Justine Wong Arantes' mom, and it's going to be like a fun little way to support together, which is really cute. So, And my family is really big, so we have like 25 people on my mom's side, so they're probably all going to get together and do watch parties, and I don't know. They'll, we'll find ways to make it work. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to have you look at the camera. Okay. And, um, and so talk to your friends and family back home. Oh, my gosh. I get this one chance to do this? Okay, all right. Okay, I'm talking to my friends and family back home. All right, you just let me know. We're good? All right. Hello, everybody. First, I have to start off with my parents. Mom, Dad, I'm going to Tokyo. Like, we are going to the Olympics. That is, is that, does that blow your mind like it blows my mind? I don't know. I just want to say... I'm here because we used to drive two hours Ooh, for club practice. We did. Thanks. Thank you. Leilani, Kaden, you guys came to all my tournaments. <laughs> and you sat in those cold convention centers and you played with little volleyballs with me and you pepper with me in the backyard. And, and I'm going to Tokyo now because you guys are in my corner. So thank you. Angie Tennis. You're my first ever volleyball coach for club. Thank you so much for all that you've done for me to get me to where I am. You started me on this crazy road. Who knew that the knock-kneed, gangly 12-year-old you used to coach would make it this far? Because she certainly did not. <laughs> Judy and Bill Peer, thank you guys so much. As my club directors, you guys are, again, a big part of my volleyball career. I couldn't have gone to Penn State and started this path without you guys. Speaking of Penn State, Russell. Big man Russ. You know? Nothing needs to be said. You have impacted my life, as well as so many other athletes, and I am just grateful to be right on your radar, man. Thank you for everything. To all my Penn State girls, to all my friends, to anybody that I missed, please don't think that I'm trying to ignore you. I love each and every one of you. I'm so stoked, baffled, boggled. I can't believe that this is happening, but I'm so excited that it's happening, so sending lots of love. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I'll be sending you videos in Tokyo. Don't you worry about it. Bye, guys. How was that? Are we okay? It was a good place to grow up. I... Thank you. Yeah, no, I had a lot of fun. Skied, snowboarded, played volleyball. It was a good life. Right, and then how long you down here? Um, so I am only out here in the summers. Um, okay, I'm going to have you say and spell your name and tell us. Um, I'm Jordan Poulter, J-O-R-D-Y-N Poulter, P-O-U-L-T-E-R, and my position, and I am a setter. Okay. And you're a first-time Olympian. I am a first-time Olympian, yes. <laughs> what do you think about it? I think it's crazy, um, as I'm sure Bailey and Justine probably expressed as well. Um, it still doesn't really feel real to me, to be honest. Uh, I'm... I've expressed that to Karch and to you know other people who are like so cool. I'm like I, it is really cool. Like and for having an idea of what it would mean to be an Olympian for so long and then to you know now be going to the Olympics, it's really it's really hard to conceptualize. So I'm hoping that once once we step off the flight um, in Tokyo, it'll, be, it'll actually hit me. <laughs> you know, what, what do you talk about? What did it mean? What it meant? Like, can you say that? 
Yeah, I just feel like for so many of us athletes, um, you know, this is the pinnacle growing up in America of what, like, of what sports can be. Um, and so to be able to represent the United States on that kind of a stage, um, just for me, it means all of the sacrifice and all of the work from when we were so young, all the, all the time, money and effort our parents put into us and invest in us and, you know, just all of that coming into fruition and just being able to reach this pinnacle um, in our careers, so it's awesome. And when you, like, do you look ahead and kind of envision yourself on your own Yeah, I, yeah, I think all of us, that's the, it, at the beginning of this quad, it's, you know, we are going for something that um, this program has never done before, and that's to try and win a gold medal. Um, and so, yes, I, I would be lying if I said I didn't envision us standing on that podium at the end of this. Yes, like I said, it's it's already for me very surreal to even be on the team, and let alone you know really competing for um, something that worthwhile. So it's it's so exciting. This whole summer, the potential of the next couple of weeks is extremely extremely exciting. And you guys have been through already a lot. You've been through a lot your entire you know, entire life getting Yeah, I mean, you know, we have girls in this gym who were planning on retiring after last summer, and, you know, so for them to put, have to put their life on hold, um, you know, future career plans on hold, um, to be able to, you know, grind through another year, um, it's, it's just a testament to what kind of people we have in this gym and how amazing um, athletes at this level are, and I know we spent a lot of time on Zoom calls together, like really making sure that we were uh, you know, strengthening our bond and trying to keep up uh, with each other when we were all in different parts of the country at home with our parents. Most of us were, <laughs> were at home with our parents and um, it was just cool to see the commitment from a distance, you know, getting on Zoom calls and doing lifts on Zoom and it was, yeah, a lot of time, but it was well worth it right now. Yeah, so we we would our strength coach would give us time slots, and those of us who had equipment or could find some equipment, some of us had some of us had full like racks in our basement. Some of us had a couple dumbbells, and so it was kind of tailored to what each person had. But we, yeah, we would get on, and um, he would you know be able to kind of critique us, our form, and and help us out, motivate us. Uh, but yes, we. We did a couple times a week get on a Zoom and uh, have some lifting sessions. I think the lifting part for me was was great. My parents had a nice setup in their basement, um, and I was able to take advantage of that. But. You know, during the pandemic, like m most other people, I found myself going on so many different walks and biking more than I've ever biked in my life. And so, you know, from that aspect, I actually was in, I think, more of a fit state than I had been in a while. In terms of the volleyball, <laughs> the volleyball aspect of being fit is a completely different, um, different road, as many volleyball players can tell you. Just, I think, the muscles and some of the cardiovascular things are just something you can't train unless you're playing uh, but no it was um, it was a challenge my sister also plays volleyball so we would try and pepper in our front yard and uh, toss the ball around but other than that it was just everyone was kind of trying to make do with what they had and how do you feel now going how do you feel about your own fitness and, and about yeah no I feel I feel great we just came off of a five-week um, tournament in in Rimini in Italy um, and you know we were able to we were able to get good practices, good lifts in during that, as well as um, having three matches every uh, three days and then three days off. So kind of that that teeter totter um, of you know playing and trying to get some training in. And I think I think we all feel really prepared right now. That's great. Yeah. And it seems like I mean I've said this a couple years in college, but yeah. you know you guys are having so much. You look great, but you also really. 
It is fun. I mean, to, to be in a gym where the level and competitiveness is so high um, all the time, you know, I, I think everyone on this team can say that they enjoy competing the most out of anything the sport has to offer. And it, um, it is, it's, it's a competition every day. Every day you step on the court, you know, the people on the other side want to beat you and want to stop you from, from winning. But it's cool that at the end of the day, we're all, you know, wearing the same jersey. We're all representing America. And so that's, that. I think for me, that's the coolest part. Because even when, even when we're practicing, when someone makes a really good, uh, a really good shot or a good swing or a good serve, and you're like, dang, you know, it's like, oh, wait, she's, you know, she's, she's on my team at the end of the day. So that's, that's a really cool, um, a really cool aspect of, of all of this. There's, there's an incredible camaraderie. Yes, there is. I think I, I really do think that all 12 of us um, just enjoy each other's company on and off the court. And that's something that's something I think that's really hard to find in team sports. But all 12, all 12 seem to be really about it. And we've worked hard. We worked really hard during the pandemic. Um, started with 23 of us and then came down to 18 and then 12. And um, just all of the all of the effort and time we put into those conversations and kind of creating some vulnerability and that space to just um, have hard conversations just brought us a lot closer together in the end. That's great. Yeah. How, how would you overall describe the strength of the team? I, I would just say, I would say resilient is um, how I would describe our strength. And I think, like I said, just looking back on the last year and a half, even this last quad, um, or I guess five years now, it's not really quad anymore since it's been five years, but just to see how much this program has changed and where we are right now, um, I think there was a lot of resiliency that went into that and this pandemic didn't make it easy on anyone. Um, and I'm just extremely proud to be able to compete and come into the gym every day and be surrounded by these people and these incredible women, uh, women that I've looked up to and watched play uh, for a lot of my volleyball life. So. Extremely grateful. You guys are number one in the world. What's that like? You know, we actually, I'm not going to lie, we don't really look at the rankings, to be to be honest, because at the end of the day, it's what's, it's whatever matches in front of us. And, um, you know, to get to where we want to go, get that gold medal, we have to, we have to go through everyone. We have to go through a lot of tough teams. And so being number one doesn't mean anything until, until we achieve what we want to. Yes, uh, my uh, my high school and my parents and just all of our friends and family are it just yes. I feel the love. I feel the love. Every everything I did in college with success that was I was successful in to now, um, it's it's just awesome to see that people are people are following and people care and it's um, it's cool to be able to represent my community and my family and just. I don't think any of us take for granted where we came from, um, and I for sure don't either. Great. What would you like to say to them? We'll have you look at the camera, and if you want to thank your friends and family, you know. Yeah. Um, I just want to thank everyone that has been on this journey with me. Um, you know, whether you have been my teammate or been my coach or been a fan or supporter, I am just so grateful to be in the position that I am today. and. I'm excited to um, be able to come home after all of this and, and see you guys. So thank you. Perfect. Awesome.